Hello and welcome to today's video recording, video log entry. Uh, what we'd like to do today is look at an example of impedance matching uh, that is very specific. And what we are looking at is an example from an analytical approach to impedance matching. And this is from the course taught by Bob Freilich on impedance matching. It's a short online course. And in that course, he goes over how you can calculate the values for an impedance matching network. And it's largely based on transformations uh, between combination of series, combination of reactance and resistance, and finding the equivalent parallel combination of reactance and resistance. And from those relationships, you can actually expand on that concept and calculate matching networks. And we are doing a, an example in the class. And what we'd like to do at this in this video is look at what that ends up looking like on the Smith chart. So to set up the problem here, we're given an example of trying to find a matching network between two terminations. And one of the terminations is a 25 ohm resistor in series with a 12.7 picofarad capacitor. And the other termination is a simply a 250 ohm resistance. So now on the Smith chart, setting this up, what we can do is uh, we're working on a normalized Smith, char Smith chart. So starting with the 25 ohm resistor in series connection with a 12.7 picofarad capacitor, 25 ohms in a 50 ohm normalized system, 25 is half of 50. So the resistance starts out at 0 0.5. And from there, we add a series capacitance. And uh, series capacitors uh, follow uh, add reactance. And so the termination will change along the line of constant resistance of 0 0.5 and uh, add a reactance here. And you can see at this point that uh, we've added 12.7 picofarads of uh, capacitance. So we end up at this point on the Smith, Smith chart. The other termination is 250 ohms. 250 divided by 50 gives us 5 ohms normalized. So that would be this point over here uh, at 5. So we want to go from this termination over to this termination. And we use the analytical techniques and from there, we determined that the total capacitance should take us to a point on the um, a point in the circuit where the Q uh, is three. Uh, we're starting out with a Q of one. We want to add capacitance to a point, like I said, where the Q total Q is three. Uh, so let me add a circuit here. That's going to let me. Um, add values or build up a, a matching network. So I'll just drag it over right till it's pretty much right on top of our starting point here. And then question of how fussy to be on as far as making it exact, but everything is a bit inexact in working with RF uh, for various reasons. And um, so we need to add seri more series capacitance until the value of Q goes up to 3. And our default value, coincidentally, just took us right, just about right to 3 as it was. Uh, but you can see we can change it around, and the Q value changes. Uh, we want to get it just about right to 3. And it depends on how precisely I drag that point around, uh, since we're working in a graphical tool. There's going to be some fudging uh, going on there. Now, as you can see, this puts us on a point where if we add a 
shunt component uh, with a positive reactance, it's going to take us right up to our 5 ohm termination. So from the exercise and using the analytical techniques, we know uh, that uh, we need to add an inductor and we calculate the value of that inductor uh, using the formulas and the, the value that we get from the class uh, is uh, calculating is 26.52 nanohenries. So I've added a shunt inductor here and it came up with a default starting value and what the formulas are telling me that is that if I change this inductance to 26.52 that should get us right on top of the 5 ohm normalized termination there. So let's try typing it in. So this is 26.52 and the software is allowing me to input um, unnormalized values etc. So that uh, hopefully isn't confusing but look at that we end up right we end up right on top of that termination. Similarly, we were able to calculate the capacitance, but uh, it's a little bit of an interesting problem in this example because we started out with some capacitance in the termination. So the formulas for analy analytical formulas for developing the impedance matching network let us calculate the total capacitance, and from there we need to uh, subtract out the existing capacitance that's called absorption uh, but we get the total capacitance from the formula needs to be 4.24 picofarads and uh, just for purposes of demonstration I can sort of add a point really close to our starting termination here and add a series capacitor sort of scooting along right next to where we where we were and when I get out to the point graphically where we are at about three a Q of about three the total capacitance because I'm just uh, sort of running alongside the two series capacitors you can see the total capacitance is right around 4.24 in fact if I drag it out it's 4.24 just about that value and then the closer I get to actually being on the starting value you can see that's graphically that's uh, acting pretty much equivalently so this is what the analytical derived matching network ends up looking like on the Smith chart and uh, so you can see that there is a correlation uh, we do, in fact, end up uh, at a matched condition w between the two terminations. So we hope you enjoyed this brief video, and uh, we're going to look at another aspect of this matching network, and that is utilizing a uh, two sections of matching network to improve the matching bandwidth. Uh, response by lowering the Q value. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a separate video. Thanks a lot for watching.